happy Sunday, y'all. Happy Sunday. Y'all know I just got done cooking. This doggone cheese sauce running everywhere. I'll show y'all what I got. I got today some lemon pepper, salmon, some zucchini and onions, and some cheesy cauliflower. I cooked some broccoli, too, only because it was going bad. It looked like it was about to go bad. So I said, no, I'm not going to waste my money. I'll eat it tomorrow. It wasn't that much, so I decided I wasn't going to eat that, too. But who knows? This dinner's a little light. And for the drink, y'all, this just one of those mixed drinks of peach tea. One of those drink mixture things. Let me take a little slip, because I'm hot. I've been in that kitchen. So how y'all doing today? Anyway, let me say my grace. Lord, thank you for this Sunday. Lord, thank you for our help, our strength, and blessing us to see this day, Lord. Lord, bless everyone here who has gathered here today to join in with this meal. Lord, meet them at their knees if they're standing in a need right now, Father God. Thank you for all of us being able to join and gather together, Lord, in fellowship. We appreciate the things that you do. We thank you for what you already have done for us, Father. Lord, I thank you for the food that we have and we are about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies. In Christ's name, amen, amen. So, y'all, hey, what you been doing today? Y'all, it's raining here. And my brother just told me it rained yesterday. And it rained some Friday. He was just telling me it was supposed to rain the Thursday. So, zucchini and onions, y'all. I used on them packaged cheese sauce mix, and it's just running everywhere. But, mmm. Oh, that zucchini good. I'm going to have to go get some more of that. Anyway, y'all. Y'all know I got a bunch of this and that to talk about. So, yeah. I always was pretty good in school, y'all. But I, did, I couldn't stand science right. I don't know why I got intrigued the other day. I think it was the news I was watching. And I never really thought much about what the difference between wasps and bees were. You know, because I, um, uh, ooh, that's the salmon falling apart. It was only in the oven for 15 minutes. It's more so. And, um, so they were saying how. Now, I know, I guess we talked about insects and science, but I just don't remember no in depth conversation about wasps and bees. And then I knew bees made honey. So they were saying that bees are like honeybees, they're sweet and kind and whatever, but they sting too. And people see the purpose for them. But the purpose for wasps are like, this was like a British um, study. Are there natural pesticides? They get rid of all the one unwanted insects. This is some nerdy talk, y'all, so I'm sorry. They get rid of all the unwanted insects naturally without the pesticides and chemical stuff. So... The suggestion was that you breed a place for them to be in your garden. But I'm like, I understand everything has a purpose, but I don't think I'm just going to make it a breeding ground in my garden for no darn wasps. Because you're going to have to duck and dodge to go out there to get anything out of your garden and even enjoy it if the wasp are out there. I thought, man, it's got to be a better way. So they were trying to find a way to protect the wasp. Because you know if you see a wasp nest, you're going to get rid of it quick. Because, of course, don't nobody want to be stung. Anyway. So, yeah. So, guys. Yeah. I was talking the other day. I don't know what I was talking about to my coworker, right? And I said, 20. And she said, you know what? And she said, 
So she repeated this line. And I was like, huh? She said, yeah, you sound just like that. She said, I know all about the 1820 rule. I'm like, huh? So she repeated it again. And then I said, yeah, Jill, Jill, Jill Scott's character said that. Well, she gave me a hint that it was from a Tyler Perry movie. I said, that's right. Jill, Jill Scott's character said that in that movie. Uh, I said, and then she ended up helping him when he had cancer. And the second one. So we started talking about, she said, yeah, I don't see how she did that. So I said, that's the theme of Tyler Mary Perry movies, because you remember the other girl helped him. Now, she did throw him in the tub. She helped him in, um, why did I get, no, a diary of a mad black woman. And I kid you not, y'all, I just told, this has happened to somebody in real life here recently, one of my family members. And I told her, her ex didn't have anywhere to go. So I said, you got to help him. You got to help him. That's your mother's legacy. You know she would have done it. You know, you're going to have to let your inner. And I said the person's name, her mother's name, come out. So she did end up helping him, long story short. So my question to you is, if you had an ex in need of help, and the person, because you know in the movie, the person wasn't good to, um, the person just was not, you know, good at all to um, neither one of you women. And they helped them. And <clears throat> could you help an ex that wasn't good to you? It's easy to help somebody that was good to you and y'all just ended on terms that, you know, wasn't bad. You just grew apart. So, yeah, you would help them, of course. But what about somebody who was a monster, kind of rude and mean to you in a relationship? And I had to do a lot of soul searching. I thought about that. Now, why I encouraged her to help him, I was like, hmm, would I? Would I do it? And, y'all, I honestly and truly would help a person, even people that I've had bad relationships with and things went bad in the relationship. I can honestly and truly say I would help them. However, and I wouldn't hold it like I wouldn't want them to be beholden to me and I wouldn't treat them bad, try to get them here and pay them back. No, because I'd have moved on and forgave them. So, but... Let me tell you what I would do. Now, what you're not going to do is make me feel uncomfortable in my home. You can come here, and I can help you, but you better come with a bag full of act right. Because uh, I'm not saying cow tie to me or nothing. Just be yourself. But be your nice version of yourself. Don't bring that ugly version with you because I ain't got time for it. Because I'm telling you, what's the name of the girl that used to live across the street from Martin or across the apartment? All kind of shit ain't they going to come out on you. And you're going to get, get gone up out of here. Because, uh, uh-uh. No, we ain't going to. I'm not going to come home and I'm trying to help you. And you're going to have me in a place where I can't have no peace now. But if you come here, you can act like you got some sense. Until you can get yourself together, you're welcome to stay, and I'll help you as much as I can. But, uh-uh. But, you know, that's if the person is sick or something and they don't have nowhere to go. You know I would. You know, I just want you to be appreciative, you know. Look like you've got some kind of home training. But anyway, so would y'all do it? Would y'all help somebody like that? Now, y'all know I got a bad story to tell you. Sometimes, I watch, I like to watch the Ledge show, you know. Know the Ledge, know the Ledge. But child, he be saying some stories, and I just, this one, these people, I guess, was from Nigeria, both the people. 
And um, the mother came home to her son's room, and she looked to see if her son was at home. Yeah, he had murdered a girl, strangled her, and put her in the recycling bin and had the recycling bin in his room. And he had just met this girl, basically. You know, and the mother found the body. She said that she thought it was strange that the recycling bin was in her son's room. And so she opened it and saw a foot. Well, of course she reported him. But isn't that something for you to come home and... And so they thought he was a flight risk. I think he had a flight risk to go back to Nigeria. And so they said his bond at $250,000. But I'm like, surely. Surely, uh, you know, the mother not going to get him out, I don't think. I don't think he going to get out. They thought he was a flight risk. But I wouldn't think you would be able to travel if, you know, you've been on, um, I don't know. I guess people get away all the time like that and be fugitives on the run. So, I don't know. But I would leave his tail right there in jail. That was just sad. And I feel sorry for the mother and, oh, my goodness. I tell you. Is something. It was so funny. I was watching this. Um, I don't know what made me click on it. It came up in my recommendation. And now keep in mind, I was 24 when I got pregnant with my daughter. But I had had my son at 19. I wasn't with my parents. I was in North Dakota. But with my daughter, and this girl says she, her parents were so upset. Now, she's engaged to the guy she's pregnant by. But I think her parents are Caribbean. And she um was saying her mother didn't speak to her for a little while. When she found out she was pregnant, she was so upset. Her dad stayed upset for about a day or a few hours. You know because they wanted her to be married first. And I don't know what I thought my parents were going to say. Now, I told my aunt early on in the pregnancy with my daughter. You know, keep in mind, my dad was a minister. But I think I was six months pregnant before I told my dad I was pregnant. For my family, I was pregnant. And I didn't go around them much. So it was easy for me to hide. And I think it was doing Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving dinner at my aunt's house. They wasn't mean about it. But they wasn't all happy either. So you know how they go. But yeah. Uh-huh. So, would you, if you're young, would you hide your parents, you know, would you hide a pregnancy from your parents? If you got pregnant, that's for both men and women. Would you tell your parents your girlfriend was pregnant? Or your husband, your fiance, or... Do you worry about their expectations? I don't know. Y'all yeah, had two questions that I wanted to answer. Somebody asked me, and I'm sorry, I forget both who asked me both of these questions. Asked me, um, how do I like living in Memphis? And I'll tell you, Memphis is just like anywhere else. I've lived several places in my life. And it's crime here. It's good and bad here. And I will tell you that... 99% of the people are going on about their life, doing their business, trying to live and do good. And it's a it's a good city. You know, it has its good points and bad points, but that's anywhere you go. You can live in small town USA and think you safe. 
and it could be the worst crimes in the world there that could happen there. A one-off crime, you know, so you just never know. You're not insulated. You know, out here where I live is in the suburbs, something can happen just like somewhere in the inner city where some of they think are the most baddest part of town. You could go there and be just fine. And then come back out here and something can knock you over your head. You just never know. You just It's just life. You know, you have to live and make the best out of wherever you are and realize it's good and bad wherever. So, if you're thinking about coming to visit Memphis, don't be afraid to come here. And everybody that look like they're going to do something to you ain't thinking about you. And all honesty. And the other question was, that's kind of in relation to, to pregnancy. Asked me, was I looking forward to being a grandmother? Well, my daughter said she didn't want no kids. Okay? But she might change her mind because both two two of her cousins on both sides of her, they did later on in life. And I think they were both 30 when they had kids. And um, she's only 24. She'll be 25 in February. If she has some, she has some. If she don't, she don't. One thing she know, and I preach this, and I hope I stick to it, I don't have no takeover spirit. I think children should be with their parents at all if they can. I know in some instances they can't. <coughs> that's not to say I'm not going to have my grandchild a lot. But that's her child. And because of my situation huh? Growing up, and my biological mother not being there, it's important. I think it's important that mothers connect and be with their children. That's just my opinion from my own personal life story. And like I say, in some extreme circumstances, I know grandparents have to step in where the children are deceased or the children are on drugs or in jail. But if at all possible... And it's not going to be a harmful to the child. A child needs to be with their parents. Uh, I think grandparents should be allowed to be just that grandparent. You know. I would love to be able to. You know, there's so much going on in these child care centers. I would love to be able to be in a position where when she do start having children, that I could help her out in that way. And that some kind of way I wouldn't have to be working, you know, and I could make sure you know, at least in their early years that I would be able to keep them or something like that. I would love that if, if she does ever have any. But like I said, children are a big responsibility. And one thing you should do, I know things happen, but don't bring them in the world if you're not prepared to, to, to deal with what it is you have to sacrifice. Willingly, you should be wanting to, to take care of your children. And you have to be prepared to love and, 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 and raise them because God entrusted you with those children. So, anyway, that's enough of my soapbox about children today. I love little children. And guess what? I love y'all too. But God loves you the most. Remember to always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. And y'all enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And hopefully y'all having some better weather than what we have in here. Love you much, and I'll see you later this week for the weekly word and some more meals and chats. Bye. Oh, and by the way, y'all, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time is when I plan to do a live. Hopefully, I can figure this camera thing out this time. Have a good night. Love you. <laughs>